Welcome back to my series on using the Loop Deck Plus. Now that we've examined the Loop Deck Plus console and how to use it, let's see how it works in Premiere Pro. I'm using my own presets that are available below. I am also using my own custom labeling overlay that is available for purchase from kbcovers.com. Now the first thing we can do with the Loop Deck Plus in Premiere is navigate through the sequence. We can do this a variety of ways. The D2 dial next to the arrows can be used to jog the playhead or scroll through individual frames when used with Fn held down. Now these are similar functions, but with slightly different feels, so I recommend trying them both out to see which one works best for you. The jog feature has some acceleration built in, skipping more frames as you turn it faster. If you prefer the more consistent action of the single frame scroll, I would invert the mappings so you don't always have to hold down Fn. If we want to move farther through a large sequence, we can use the large dial to jump between edit points of the selected tracks, similar to using the up and down arrows. Or we can scroll between markers, clicking the dial to edit them, or place a new one if we are not parked on one to edit. And last, we can scroll between keyframes within the effects track of a single clip for more detailed fine tuning. The D1 dial allows you to zoom in and out of the length of a sequence, and pressing it resets to see the entire sequence. These navigation options are also available in the first four scroll wheels when in B&W mode, as is the ability to change video and audio track heights. Pressing the P1, P2, and P3 buttons changes the focus to the sequence, source, or program panel without using the mouse. Once we can use the Loop Deck Plus to move around effectively within Premiere's UI, we can start actually making changes to our project. Most initial work will be done with custom mode active, and then we will shift back to the main mode for color work. The main dial trims the selected cut when Fn is pressed, as does the saturation dial on the right when custom mode is enabled. The center dials slip and slide clips around horizontally, and the arrow keys can push clips between tracks when Fn is held down. The C5 and C6 buttons can really help with trimming efficiently. Individual clips can be refined with motion settings and crop effects, as well as color correction. I recommend enabling auto select at this stage in most cases, and the dials will affect the selected clip, usually under the playhead. Clips can be scaled, moved around, and rotated. Control over the opacity, blending mode, and volume are also available at the touch of dedicated dials. It is easy to hop to the next clip, as long as the correct tracks are selected. The rollers can be used in sap mode to crop clips, adding the effect if it is not already present. If you prefer the feel of dials, my preset also has the crop functions mapped to them in the main FN layer, and laid out in such a way that they intuitively surround an image cocked slightly counterclockwise, sitting between the shadows and whites dials, with the blacks and highlights controlling the left and right crop. All of these values can be keyframed over time, but this currently requires manually toggling animation with the mouse to get started. Once you have your first keyframe set, editing that value on a different frame will automatically set a new keyframe. So we can easily scroll down the sequence and set a series of motion frames. Once we have keyframes, we can also use dials or rollers to move between them, and other ones to slip those keyframes around for precise timing placement. Currently, clicking roller 7 or 8 will add an ease in or ease out effect to the selected keyframe. Once we have our edit dialed in, it's time to start color correcting the clips. Once again, enabling auto select is key here, as is enabling the right tracks, assuming your timeline is well organized. In main mode, twisting any dial will add a lumetri effect to the selected clip, and begin editing that value. The dials control the basic and creative values, while in hue, sat, and loom modes, the first three rollers control the X, Y, and Z axes of the highlights, midtones, and shadows wheels, respectively. Clicking any of these dials or rollers resets that value back to the default. For really detailed corrections, the secondary color corrector can be used to refine just certain parts of an image, all while holding down the FN key. The easiest way to start using the secondary corrector is to FN click the roller with the color closest to what you are looking for. Then the last three rollers can be used in hue, sat, and loom mode while holding down the FN key to refine those three ranges to determine where exactly your correction is applied. The first three rollers are mapped to the three wheels again exactly the same, but with FN held down to send those commands to the secondary tool instead of the primary corrector. Five of the dials can also be used to refine the secondary correction with FN held down, denoted by the blue second prefix on their label. There are also buttons clearly labeled for various tools, undo, save, import, export, etc., which should be the easiest ones to get used to doing. Enable Disable is one of my favorites, and I've mapped it consistently to C2 across all my apps, with Duplicate as the FN alternative. It takes some time to get used to utilizing these new controls, especially if you are well acquainted with existing keyboard shortcuts, but you should be able to use the Loop Deck Plus to work faster once you've adjusted to it. That should save you time, but don't expect to be using it seamlessly on the first day. For more detailed info, check out techwithmikefirst.com.